Jesus In the Saint Amen. We'll sing the hymn numbered one on the program. My hope is built on nothing less. Once again, we want to say a very big thank you to you for the gift of today, the gift of life. The opportunity out for this morning here to be that you have called. Lord, we to be with us. Of it all, Lord. This is our Lord and. Now, Mommy, I've needed you. Could have saved you. You never would have died. In life, 
I loved you dearly. In death, I love you still. In my heart, you hold a place no one else can ever fill. It broke my heart to lose you, but you didn't go alone. Part of me went with you the day God took you home. Mommy, you told me that when you picked me up, held me above shoulder level and said, my sister. You therefore called me sister. True to the call, you became my big sister. As well as, but you love nationally. Who else will love? Everything. You encouraged me when I was low. You rejoiced with me when I rejoiced, and you mourned with me when I mourned. You understood me through and through. Indeed, if I started a sentence, you could feel gen. Wanted me to do quickly. Do that in the end, I would not have to do it. Great mother, even though I ceased being a child long ago, you continue to nurture me. Whenever my heart was broken, with my wounds, you would never jump into the problem. You lied quietly. You thought you were a walkover. At the time was right, they understood that you were a strong, no nonsense woman who knew how to tread cautiously. Indeed, you always said in Ga, To wait, I do not strut and throw my, my weight around as I walk. Not because I cannot do it, but because the head of a ghost may be under the ground where I am walking. That was your cue for us to humble ourselves and always be conscious that life was not always what it seemed. You had a lot of patience and tolerance, but when you reach the end of your rope, the person at the other end will be left in no doubt that he or she had encountered an indomitable lioness. Together, we always found solutions to our problems and the problems of the entire family. Even if not immediate, we'd work through it steadily until we found a solution. You had a strategy for every political problem. Sometimes I marveled at how far you were ahead of the pack. You would assess the character of anyone his presence. Your predictions and projections always came to pass. Those who were intuitive and extra smart were quick to recognize you took ill, you appeared in my bedroom just as I lay down to sleep. You put your arms around me. You held me in a very long embrace. And you said, thank you, thank you. Oradon, Oradon, thank you for everything. Then you vanished. I jumped up with a start. What did that mean? I was confused. A few days later, I got out of bed in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. And I saw you standing right there. You said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, you vanished. I came to Laboni to see you and I asked you, Mommy, me no fear. Why have you been coming to my bedroom? Me no ba fear yen chue mi beke. I have seen you twice. You asked, your, your mommy asked me, what did I say to you? And I told her, you were thanking me. She said, if I said it was in order because I'm really all you have done for me. A week later, the doctor said we should bring you for blood transfusion because your hemoglobin level was low. That was when you reacted badly to the blood transfused and became an invalid for a couple of weeks before leaving us. Mommy, your departure has crushed me. My world has come tumbling down. I don't know what to do. I was very angry with you for leaving me. But after careful consideration, I know that if you had power over death, you would never leave me. So rest easy. Rest easy. Rest in the bosom of the Lord. I'm comforted by the dream that Mokaila had. He said you were in white, holding a white rose with both hands. Behind you a multitude of people, all in white, with arms raised. They were cheering you on passionately. You walked a bit faster. Then you turned round and waved. And then you were gone. 
Mommy, I know the angels cheered you on as you left us and entered the heavenlies. What a great share that must have been. Your deep love for mankind will never go unrewarded. Your Christ-like actions, which you preferred over mere Christian rhetoric, will end you a place of honor in God's kingdom. Your selfless sacrificial spirit will cause him to say to you, Well done, true and faithful servant. Well done. You were a rock, a tower, a strong support. You are my sister, my friend, my all. Rest well, mommy. Rest well in the bosom of the Lord. I know the reunion with daddy, dada, and chum will be powerful. I can imagine the joy on the faces of mommy Ajwa, Auntie Christy Bonaparte, Auntie Becky Kwame, Auntie Nana Dia, Uncle Fifi Hesse, and Uncle Kwame Nina. My love to them all. Rest in peace, mommy. So we meet again. Your friend and your sister. Valerie. We are now take the farewell messages from the two other sisters. No, no. Oh, sorry. Okay. We will continue by singing the hymn numbered three on the program. We are to hold in the storms of life. We learn the world in the storms of life, page 49. <laughs>
the Lord Jesus. from the grandchildren that will be read by Selom. Esther Victoria Sawyer. Children. But as we all know, it was your role as mom because you took care of each one of us. Never dreams did we think good for you at this time. Life's journeys, you were there, and it is hard to imagine life without you. You supported us, cheered us on, provided for us, and protected us. Your grandchildren were your world, and you lived for us. Sometimes we felt you were a bit much, because you even cooked and sent frozen food to some of us when we went to the university. Yes, you heard right. Even as far as Kumasi. I mean, who does that right? Our grandma did. Ma, you never hesitated to correct any one of us when you felt we had done wrong. All those talks. It usually ended with a wise saying. 
make hay while the sun shines, or Jane me, or let money into your ship on, no one yer more blow. Meaning, you may never know whose head is below the ground, so tread cautiously. One of your favorite was time and tide, wait for no man. When all the nice talks failed and the several warnings fell on deaf ears, and you decided that enough was enough, chai, we better run for cover because the pallet knife would fly. Mommy, our friends adored you because they did not notice the age gap as you would engage with everyone at their level. You were always interested in the latest scoop and would playfully chastise us for not being good storytellers. We did not really look forward to vacation because that was a time you'd make us go through all our exam papers and do corrections for the next term. I mean, who does that, right? Our grandma did. Even when we needed to get something expensive, which was very important, you would help us draft messages to all our aunties so they would support us. Once the message was sent, you gave us no peace because you would insist on follow-up till we received a favorable response. Ma, we could go on and on and on. We have so many stories to tell, but we will put them in a book and tell your, grand your great-grandchildren about you. We will stick together and support each other because that was one of your greatest desires. We are comforted that in your last moments, we were with you, and we know you are now resting peacefully from your labor. We love you, Mommy, and we will never forget you all the days of our lives. Thank you. Continue by singing the perfect peace world of sin, page 50. We are singing it solemnly, solemnly.
ghosts soon shall cease on Jesus call us to heaven's perfect peace. We'll continue with the hymn number six whilst we are doing that hymn who kindly ask covered closed him six safe in the arms of Jesus safe on his gentle breast there by his love
him numbered him numbered my life and let it be compassion of our God, the dawn from heaven will break upon us to shine on those who live in darkness under the shadow of death and guide our faith into the way of peace. Jesus said, I will be with you always to the end of time. May we continue this service in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll sing the hymn numbered 11. Jesus, you lover of my soul. Grace with thee 
is found grace to cover all my sin let the healing streams abound they can keep me pure within thou of life a fountain art freely take me of me spring thou art within my heart rise to all eternity let us pray Lord of life and the conqueror of death, you are help in every time of trouble. In the presence of death, you comfort those who mourn. We bow before you, believing you bear our grief and share our sense of loss. Give us grace to worship you and to trust in your goodness and mercy. Assure us that because Christ lives, we shall also live. Through the same Jesus Christ, Lord, God of grace and power, send your Holy Spirit among us in our time of grieving, that we may hear your promises and know them to be true and so receive the comfort and peace they bring through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hymn number 12, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Page 5, 3.
not listen to the biography of Mama to be taken by a family member. Biography. We're going to give a very short summary of the biography. At it will be made available also online for all to read. So I'll read a few paragraphs of the biography. Esther Victoria Sawyer, also known as Rajwa Sewa, was born on Monday. January 30, 1939, to John Calepto Bonaldi from Milan, Italy, and Mercy Sasraku, Elias Amari Redua, and Ashanti Royal Sanse. When she was three years old, Esther's father was recalled to Italy with his brothers to be enlisted for war, where he lost his life, unfortunately. Her grand uncle, Joseph Kobnabel, we are also known as Beria Timbers, a renowned timber merchant in Kumase, took upon himself the role of a father and executed it honorably. Her informative years were however spent in Accra under the care of Madame Sophia Corte, aka Mother, whose Esther's children fondly referred to as Nana Kaneshi. Erajua was many parts to everybody. We shall forever remember her. The good Lord gave her to the Ekwone Busia of Kukufu Mensasi, and we also loaned a Rajwa to Greater Accra. Now the good Lord has to take her back and give her so that she would take her into her, his bosom. So, Rajwa, your family from Kokofu Mensase, your mother, Marijua, your grandmother, a your uncles, Kwamna Beria, Kwamna Sibe, Kujo Boateng, Ajua Boatma, Amaduma, Save farewell. Rajua Ukwa Kachomu say, Omu Chomu, and my hair. And my way down, Munina, on my hair. A doffu, I went down, Munina, on my hair. Uncle Harry, on some hair. Rajua Kuguman Sasu, Nanty, Yami. We will now take a song rendition from Dr. Alfred Adakwe. Precious Lord, take my heart. When my way groweth dear, Precious Lord, linger near when my light is almost gone. Hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me on. Precious my hand, lead me on, let me stand, 
I am tired. I am weak. I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my work is all done and my race here on earth is ran let me see by the light that you have shown that first scene is all bright where the lamb is the light take my hand precious lord lead me on when the dark appear and the night draws near and the day is past and gone and the river I stand guide my feet hold my hand precious Lord take my hand lead me on precious Lord my hand lead me on let me stand i am weak i am tired i am worn through the storm through the night lead me on to the light take my hand precious lord lead me scripture reading selected for this special burial service they will be taken by the Reverend Okuti Butwe and then the second one by Mrs. Angela L. Adas Nafi scripture readings First reading is taken from John chapter 14, reading from verse 1 to 7. And these are the precious words of Jesus Christ himself that gives us hope in time of trouble. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. The we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. May the Lord add his blessings upon his word. Amen.
Our second Bible reading, Revelation, verses 9 to 14. It's 9 to 14. Let us hear the word of God. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, O God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb, and all the angels stood around the throne and about the end elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Say, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This is the word of God. Amen. As we prepare our hearts to listen to the word of encouragement from scripture that will be delivered by the Reverend Professor Set Ayeti, we'll sing the hymn number 14, 14. Give me the wings of faith to rise. Comfort us with your living word. Gracious Holy Spirit, dwell with me, and I myself will gracious be. And with words that help and heal, would your life in mine reveal. And with actions bold and meek, would for Christ, my Savior, always speak. Amen. Beloved, 
at the one week observation of the life of Auntie Esther, I spoke on the theme celebrating the believer's security. Auntie Esther was a woman of faith. She lived by faith and not by sight. And all the tributes that have been written and read, and the many more that I know will be read at the appropriate time, reveal life lived in Christ that bore abundant fruit to the glory of Christ, a life that glorified God. And we thank God for Auntie Esther. Today, my theme is the end has not yet come. And these were the theme were said to me who has also passed on, Alaji Baturi. And I know many of you will remember him dearly. A host to Al the famous program Alaji and Alaji on Radio Gold. When I was being severely persecuted at Kolebu, He, not knowing me, decided to investigate the matter. And when he found out that it was a conspiracy against me and my colleagues and the hospital, he said to me, the end has not yet come. And then he said, in an action drama movie, evil seems to triumph until the end. And at the end of the movie, you see the real hero, or the real heroes. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we all face many, many temptations. There are many struggles in our life. Suddenly there is an announcement or revelation of a disease that is life-threatening. Or suddenly there is loss of job or suddenly there is road traffic accident, and there is death in the family. Suddenly there are many tragedies. And all of us, because we are flesh and blood, yield to that temptation that the end has come. Indeed, we find the story of Mary and Martha who pleaded with the Lord Jesus Christ that come over the one you love is dying. And Jesus waited. And when he arrived, Lazarus had been dead four days. And the sister said, if only you had come earlier, if only you had been here, our brother would not have died. They also felt the end had come. There was no need for Christ to come at that time because Lazarus was in the tomb four days and the body. The disciple says, after the last supper, mourned because Christ had told them, you will not see me again. I will not be with you much longer. And so they were deeply troubled. But Jesus said to them, Do not be troubled. God, believe my father's hand. Also, I will you. And when I so that where I may be also. Jesus was telling them, the end had not yet come. And then to draw how much they have understood, how much they have known him, he said, and you know the way. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know the way. And then Jesus made a startling statement. I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. Christ is not saying, I will show you the way. Or here is the way, walk in it. He said, I am the way. In other words, our faith in him, grounded in him, is what will take us to glory. He himself will take us there. And then I'm the truth. Christ said, don't research and find truth anywhere else. I am the truth. And then he said, I am the life. Beloved, the life we have is not our own life. That life is a gift of God to us. The life we have is God's gift. The life given to Antiesa was God's gift to her. And when Christ says he is the life, he's saying he's also the source of life together with the Father. The life is in him, and he gives it. And if he gives you that life, then that life is not transient, but that life is eternal. Beloved, the passage read for us in the book of Revelation is so dear. John the Apostle, among those who were troubled when Jesus was about to face the cross, was given the privilege at the age of about 95 or so, 60 or so years after the resurrection and after Jesus had left them. He was given the privilege to have a heavenly scene. Indeed, the book of Revelation is not only the chapter in the, in, the, in the Bible or the book in the Bible that tells about the story of God. Every book in the Bible, the 66 books in the Bible from Genesis the way to Revelation is a story about, it's about the story of God revealing the Christ, his only begotten son, our savior. And the climax of that story was in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. The blood that he shed, the blood that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And indeed, the story of the resurrection, the empty tomb. And Jesus is saying, by all that, he has died because he's risen, the end has not come for us. We shall also be raised, will be raised day. But in the Revelation chapter 7, we find a very peculiar story. And after this, and there was a that no one could draw from, from every tongue and every people. A wonderful image. A throng that no one could count. First, this is a fulfillment of the prophecy or the promise God, that God made to Abraham that his seed shall be as numerous as the stars and as numerous as the sand of the seashore. No one. At the time John saw that, the gospel had not reached beyond Palestine and maybe a few other places to Rome and so on. Certainly the gospel had not reached Ghana. But John could see a multitude. John could see all of us, every believer, if we had the means of magnifying that and looking at the people there, we'll see Auntie Esther and Uncle Ari and all those who have departed there before the throne and before the Lamb. Hopefully, we will see ourselves there, although we are here. But just as Christ has gone to prepare a place, so we conduct the gospel.
believe in Christ uh, the way and the life. The hymn we chose before the sermon said, give me the wings of faith to rise within the veil and see the saints above how great their joys, how bright their glories be. Once they were monarchs here below and poured out cries and tears, they rested hard as we do now with sins and doubts and fears. Once and tears I was a mourner. Today, she is full of joy in the presence of the throne of God and before the Lamb, her Savior. Today we are mourners here, but tomorrow we shall also be among the saints that God has called home. The church triumphant, the church on earth, but also in heaven. Beloved, let us believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, Paul says, I know in whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. We should again be able to say that. I know whom I believed. I know Christ my Lord and Savior. And I know the God in whom I believed is the God who foreknew me, who foreknew you before the foundation of the world was laid. Let us continue also to love the Lord, to serve him as we serve our fellow human beings, especially the poor and the deprived. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Father, you move in mysterious ways. Your wonders to perish. The death of your saints is precious. You said truly, in my word and believe me. And you said, that person will never come into judgment. Then you added that he has crossed from death. We thank you for this. We pass from life into death. We pass from death into death. The end has not come, but the end is already there. Give us the grace never to give up, but to continue to love you, to serve you, and on that day, you will welcome us into your very presence with exceeding joy. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us stand and express our faith in God the Father, God the Spirit. So whom do you believe? Believe in God the Father Almighty, heaven and earth. Christ is only Son, our Lord, received by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Pontius Pilate, Mary. He descended in the third day. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body. We will now sing the hymn numbered 15. When peace like a river attendeth my way. Page 54. After that, we will listen to announcement from the family. Oh. 
family from Kukufu and in Accra. We thank you all very much for being with us today. We are not yet done. From here, we shall take the mortal remains of our princess, our mother, grandmother, our friend, a relative, to the Gethsemane place for the third part of this program, as Reverend Odonko indicated to us. In view of the restrictions placed on us, There will be only 25 of us who are seated here who would follow the body to get so many. And after that, there will be no other sitting until we are told otherwise after the restrictions have been lifted, we shall come back to you. We thank you very, very much for helping us to be law abiding. We hope that you will continue to help us when we go to the cemetery. We thank you very, very much for being with us. And there's nothing more that we can say. Esther Victoria Sawyer, although gone, a princess, a mother, if you were to say anything, would say thank you. And then she's happy, and all her wishes have been granted. We thank you very much for being with us. 
and out. The back to the sulfur to continue, and then they will tell us how we will process the cemetery. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. This is to the cemetery. First, the reef bearers, then the pearl bearers will follow with the body and the casket, then the clergy, then the family and all who are here. In doing that, let us respect the social distancing restrictions so we don't crowd out. We will now stand and do the dead march in Seoul. And after that, the Reverend Professor Set IAT will say the closing prayer and bless us. Prof, Prof Loco, please you can state. Yes, sir. Farewell. Rest in the Lord your God in whom you believed. On the last day, he will raise you up together with all those who have believed in Jesus Christ. But even now, that time has ceased for you. We know you are in eternity and you are before the throne. My dear brothers and sisters, go with the blessings of the Lord and serve the Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We shall sing. Yeah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I repeat again how we'll be moving out. The wreath bearers followed by the pallbearers with the body, then the clergy with His Excellency, the former president, will follow. Then the family heads and all others. Let us respect the social distancing restrictions. For those who will be going to the cemetery, there will be uh, okay, okay. So those who will be going to the cemetery, please, there will be a dispatch rider that will lead us. Let us avoid. Thank you. Thank you. 